Hello everyone, I had a lot of tutorial requests for my planet project, so today I offer a point by point breakdown on how I arrived at this result. We will see that from the creation of the Typho setup to the final rendering and compositing and After Effect. Let's go! So, for my rocks, I just went to the Quixel Bridge and I looked for rocks that I liked. Here, a small rock pack that I downloaded and then exported to Les Max. Okay, now that I have my rocks in my scene, I will show you my Typhlo setup, as well as the first part of my animation. Here we see the physical simulation of my rocks on the ground. I just deselect the rocks. I will now show you how to get this result. I reopen Typhlo, and if you go to Preset Flow, we have a simple physics flow, which will generate a physical simulation. We have birth, position icon with a tie icon, a shape, a physics shape for the physical simulation, and if I run, we see that the simulation is created by itself. This is basically what we need for our simulation, but we will go further. So I go back to my Typho setup, we have our animation, I just deselect event 2 for the moment to focus on the first simulation. We see that uh, as in the simple physics flow, we have a birth, a position icon with a selected tie icon, and I will just add a speed operator with a magnitude of uh, 40 and a variation of 50, as well as a divergence of uh, 45. Why divergence? Just because if I put it to zero, we can see that all the particles are generated in the same area, and it's not really nice. The same goes for the variation of the magnitude, which make it possible to control the dispersion of the particle in relation to the emitter. Okay, I also have my shape operator, and uh, I just uh, search for the stone model I want, and I just select Add Selected. I then add a rotation operator with a random 3D for the orientation, uh, which will uh, make that the stone will be generated with different orientation. I'm going back to shape to show you that I have a really low scale and now I reactivate my second event which is exactly the same as the first. I just put a very large scale for this event to create the biggest stone. I could have put the big and small stone in a single shape operator and therefore a single event but I will show you now why I did two events. In this second part, we will see how to tell to the particle to come and create our planet. For that, I created a time test in the first event and I told it to activate on the frame uh, 310 with a variation of 40 frames. And I link it to a fine target to define where it should go. For the target object, uh, I select a sphere that I had previously created which will serve as a shape for the planet. We can see that the particle stones are attracted to the sphere from the frame selected in the time test. For the target location, I choose random, so stones are not attracted to the same side, but uh, that they are on the wall sphere. And if I go to my second event, uh, we can see that the time test is uh, at the value lower than the first, which will have the effect of attracting the big stone before the debris. This is why I created two events instead of one, to have a perfect control over my animation. If I restart the animation, we can see that uh, the two types of stone are not attracted at the same time. We will now see the Find Target option. I have 10 in velocity with a variation and a acceleration of 20. The acceleration is really important. If I put a 5 for example, we can see that the particles are attracted towards the sphere but uh, which does not manage to come to stick to it. This is why you have to be very careful with your setting to get the rendering you want. Don't forget to play with the acceleration. Okay, now we will see how to create the planet ring. So I have a brush with uh, 700 particles, a position object, and for object I selected a simple tube that I had created previously. As usual, I have a shape operator with a selected stone. 
a rotation with a random 3D. And I add a spin operator so that uh, the particles spin on themselves with a spin rate of 145 and a slight variation. What we want to do next is to gradually disappear stone. For that, I created a box that I animated. To make the disappearance, I created the surface test operator and I select the box. I connected the surface test to a time test with a variation of two frames to make it more random. And I then connected this time test to a scale operator in a relative multiply and with a percentage of 50 to tell to my particle to disappear very quickly. The lower the percentage is, the faster they will disappear. We now have to go to the time flow option, retimer, select frame and create a keyframe to reverse the movement of the animation. And as you can see, we have a perfect and progressive animation of our stone along our tube to gradually create a ring. I can just reactivate my other type flow setup to have my ring and my planet. Beautiful. For the last part of the animation, I just uh, zoom out with the ring circling the planet. For that, I just selected my tube and I made it rotate with a two keyframe. And what we want is that uh, the stone of our rings follows the rotation of the tube. We have the same setup as before without the surface test because we do not need to make the stone appear or disappear. We just add the object bind operator, pick the tube, and just selected lock to object to tell the particle to follow the rotation. It's very simple. And as you can see, we have a planet with a ring of particles that revolve around the planet following the movement of the tube. Perfect. Now we will move on the final rendering, so I had to create a plane with a texture to simulate the ground. And for the light I will show you. I have in the center of the planet a very light with a sphere shape and a orange yellow tint to create the core of my planet. The rest of the light are just classic very plain that I adjust according to the sequence I render. For the render pass, I just have an extra text with a very dirt for my ambient occlusion. You can just go to map, V-ray, and here V-ray dirt. I add a very specular for the specular, of course, and a V-ray denoiser. And then I run my render. Okay, now we are in After Effects to do our editing and uh, compositing. We are of our rendering here. If I enter a sequence, we can see uh, the render pass. And that I add my specular to lighten my scene a little. And the extra text to create my ambient occlusion and have a nice shadow on the ground, as you can see. Now I will show you how to add sparks. I just isolate uh, this layer to show you the rendering of the simulation, of the spark simulation. Basically, they are generated with drop code particular. I just uh, adjust uh, the position. I increase the velocity and the random. I just uh, change the color. And in the air tab, I play with turbulence to simulate a more realistic air movement. Okay, I just add a glow to make the particle more visible. Now the final compositing. We see here my final animation. For the color correction, I love using the film plugin. We have different presets for the color grading already established that uh, can be uh, adjusted uh, either. It makes very nice different look. But uh, if you don't have this plugin, you can just uh, go to Effect, Color Correction, and play with the Color Balance, Cure, Level, Black and White, Use Saturation to have a rendering similar to mine. 
Finally, I created Flare with the Video Copilot Optical Flare plugin to give my core a much more vibrant and powerful look. Here is the flare. I just then uh, add an artifact on the side of my screen to create some dirt. Another big horizontal flare to push the light out of my core even more. And finally, my sound design and my music to sublimate all this compositing. Let's now review the final rendering. Voila, we have uh, seen in this tutorial all the steps I did from uh, Typhlo to After Effects to have this look on this animation. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned a lot. Do not hesitate to add a comment and a thumb up if you like and uh, to subscribe to my Instagram and beyond if you want. See you soon for our next tutorial. Bye.